you want to know how to install decoders in your InScale locomotives? Watch, stick around and watch this segment and see how we do it on my InScale model where this say are secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and InScale. Welcome back to the locomotive shop. So this time in a locomotive shop, uh, I have an older uh, locomotive that's been on the layout for a while. It's a B23-7. Um, it had that uh, Digitrax sound decoder in it. If you remember, um, I had a lot of issues with that decoder. So I'm finally getting around to replacing it with an ESU Loke Sound um, 73100, which is the direct select direct micro mini. And it's the, uh, the drop-in board. Now, it's a, the version four which since my, our last time together in the locomotive shop, they have since discontinued it for the new version five follow-on model. So I have a few more left in the shop that I'm gonna use up. Okay, so let's just go over the B23-7. Uh, the B23-7 was manufactured by the GE Corporation uh, starting in 1977 and its production run ended in 1984. Um, it featured the 12 cylinder FDL uh, prime mover and it produced about 3000 horsepower. Now, Conrail uh, purchased 141 of these units and they were the first uh, major railroad to purchase it from GE. This unit, the B23-7, was the Dash 7 follow-on to the U23B. And Conrail, uh, their roster in 1977 was decimated, so they were looking for numbers to bolster, and this lo they really liked this locomotive. So they had quite a few numbers. I think it was uh, of, the 200, of the 587 made by GE, I believe that uh, Conrail had the most at 141. Now this unit that we're doing here on the layout, uh, 2808, it's been here on the layout for a long, long time. It was one of the second uh, uh, locomotives I bought when I was building the layout. Um, it has already been weathered, so it's just going to be a straight swap over going from uh, the Digitrax to the ESU board. I'm very pleased with the, the weathering job that I did on it, even though it was one of my first. Uh, it had some real peculiarities that uh, developed out of it. I had lubricated the, the chassis because it was running real bad, and then when I weathered it with the Bragdon weathering powders, it kind of stuck to the side of the long hood, made a kind of interesting um, de uh, weathering pattern. And uh, really like it, don't really want to change it, just going to change that board out so it runs better. This poor locomotive has been sitting in uh, the, the engine shop for years now, um, never really got any use because it's just such a poor runner. So now with the addition of the ESU board, I'm hoping it's going to run a lot better and we can get some more mileage out of it. So sit back, uh, watch the video, and I'll talk to you afterwards. <music> Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I do is I lay out all my supplies and uh, let's start taking apart the locomotive. Um, you can see there's the old Digitrax board. I'm going to loosen the screws and pop that board out. Open up the package. I'm going to take out the board and the uh, Ziploc bag inside that has the wires and the LEDs, and then we'll get started prepping the board. The first thing I do is I solder the LEDs to the board, and then I'll uh, put together the speaker assembly and solder that on. The LED that ESU gives you has some really long leads, so what I do is I take a black marker and I mark the positively and then I trim them and then just solder them onto the pads on the board. Next thing I do is I go ahead and solder the speaker wires to the board 
uh, in preparation for building the speaker assembly. So in order to have enough room in the shell, uh, I build my own speaker box, if you will, using the 040 plastic. This just gives you enough room to slide it underneath the board at the rear end of the locomotive. Alright, so here I am soldering the wires to the speaker, and because the speaker is magnetic, it has a tendency to want to stick to the soldering on it. And because I only have two hands, the best thing I figured is to just gently clamp the uh, speaker in the vise and solder. Okay, so it's been a while since I did my other B23-7, and uh, at this point here, I'm ready to drop it in. I'm thinking I'm all good to go, and I realize there's fit issues. Um, there's a top sill that you'll see in the next couple of uh, slides that impinges on the board and doesn't allow you to fasten the chassis tight. So what I do then is disassemble the uh, chassis and take everything out of it and make preparations to go and build it. Okay, so here I am milling that sill that I, I don't know what really what else to call it, uh, just the, like the little strip of metal and with a little line through the middle where the decoder board sits or the lighting board sits. And we got to get that out of there to make room for the ESU board. And you can see in these shots how I'm just taking it out with the Dremel. So with that, uh, we can go ahead and start reassembling our chassis and putting everything back together. Um, you know, when you're doing this kind of work, uh, definitely having some kind of parts tray or even just the top of the jewel case is the best way to do it. And just lay it out in the same order that you took it out of the chassis. If you look my foam cradle, I have the shell pointing in one direction and that's how I lay all those parts out so we don't mix them all up. got the board in and it looks like there's no fit issues we're gonna go ahead and get some Capcom tape and we're gonna go ahead and tape everything up and make it all nice and neat the other thing I do is I tape the top of the speaker the back of the speaker so that there's no physical contact to the board I don't want to create any kind of short All 
All right, so I don't know if you can see from this shot or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about it. Um, in the beginning, I put two LEDs on the front and the rear. Um, I don't know why I did that, but I did. Um, but then I had to remove the rear LED. So generally speaking, when you're doing these type of installs in um, the uh, in scale locomotives, you're gonna lose your rear headlight because there's just not enough room for the rear headlight LED and the speaker. So you have to trade off. The other thing is um, the, the most of the rear headlight bezels, um, all that white, that clear plastic that catches all the light, um, you've got to trim them back. However, the Atlas B23-7 is the one locomotive that I found that you don't need to do that on. It, it actually just all fits together. So I think it's because the, the back of the long hood is so high. So you'll see, I don't even do it with anything with the headlight and I just pop it right on and it fits. So uh, that's a real good uh, feature. Okay, so here we are at the uh, computer down in the lat room. This is the one that's connected to my uh, Loke programmer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Loke programmer because it's been a while since I've used it, and we're going to go ahead and check for updates. So you just go to help, and then check for updates, and uh, this one's all up to date. So uh, then you can go ahead and get started on your project. So the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to update my deco decoder firmware and then just do it like that. And so this is how I get my sound file. So I have the uh, ESU website uh, bookmarked. So I just go there, right to this page here, and then I search for the unit that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the B23-7. Now I've already downloaded version one, so I'm gonna look for version two. So I have two different sounds. And I'll click download, select the direct, select direct micro, accept the licensing, and then it automatically downloads. Then you go over and you open the download and it'll automatically open in the Loke programmer. So now once I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and set my decoder address using the long address, so I have a four digit address. And then I'll click, go up top and click download sound file. Hit next and it tells you it's gonna take about 30 minutes and then you let it run. Then once that's complete, come back and your decoder is fully programmed. Now you can go in and change other functions if you want to.
Okay, so there you go. That's how we did it. Um, yeah, not straightforward as I thought. <laughs> Holy mackerel, that turned into a beast. I totally forgot that the, the Atlas B23 chassis has to be modified because of that top little sill. And that gives you the room in between for the ESU board to fit. Because otherwise, if you don't remove that top sill that I ground off in that video, it pinches on all the resistors and chips and you can't get the frame closed all the way. So that's why you got to remove that. Fairly easy and straightforward. Now, ESU boards. Um, what you didn't see is I burnt up two of them. That's actually the third board. So of that pile of five that I had, uh, two of them went kaput. Uh, the first one, something wrong with the motor controller, it would only go in the reverse direction. And the second one that I dropped in had a problem with the sound uh, portion of the board. It would, it would squeal. The, mo the, lo the locomotive would run normally, but all the sound you would just get out of the, the speaker was squealing. And I had tried changing out wires, I tried resoldering, I changed a new speaker, same thing all the way around. So I got two boards that failed. Um, so that so far makes, I have four boards that failed that needs uh, to go back to ESU. So now I got to reach out to them this time this week and uh, find out what if they're even supporting the, uh, the version four. Uh, they, I don't know how they're going to handle it. So more to come on that, but the problem is now I'm down to two boards. So the B23-7 is done. Uh, I have the I have an Alco 630 that I purchased. It's going to be a, um, uh, a DC only, no sound. I got to do that one. And then I have two boards left. And I the two candidates I have for that are a GP38-2 and a GP40-2. And uh, the reason those are the prime candidates to go first is because I want to get the Conrail quality logos out of there. I can't stand it. It drives me bananas. It's not my time period. Um, especially with the white sill on the bottom that really sticks out. And the GP38, when you see the video, it was a, uh, a bad lettering job from Atlas. The, there's a big gap in between the numbers for some reason. So those two are definitely going to go because they need to be repainted. Now, as for the other locomotives, I have a U23B, another B23-7. I have uh, two U25Bs. And then I have another GP38-2 and a GP40-2 that I want to do. That's six more locomotives. I got to come up with boards. So i um, kind of been shopping real quick this afternoon. And it looks like there might be some manufacturers, uh, some suppliers that have the uh, version 5 drop-in board. So I'm going to see if I can get my hands on a couple of those. And if so, then, then we'll be in good shape. If I can't get any boards, then I'm going to have to do some research and figure out what we're going to do. So... More to come on that, and uh, we'll talk about it more next time. So that's all I have for you on this locomotive shop, and uh, I'm filming this on the last day of my vacation here in November. As you can tell, I got a little bit of a 5 o'clock shadow, but I think it looks good, and I uh, got my hair cut, and uh, I'm going back to work tomorrow. So uh, yeah, but don't worry. I have, uh, I have a good schedule of how I'm going to plan all the things out, and uh, everything should be going good. Okay, so... If you're seeing this video for the first time and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel because we'd love to have you following along. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram because I'm always posting daily updates of all the status uh, down here on the layout on a daily basis. And we'd love to have you following along. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. And I'll talk to you next time in a locomotive shop. Have a good one. Bye.